So after high school, um, you know, I started to get a little bit older. So I had dibbled and dabbled in, in the streets. And, and I started to see, you know, um, my uncle, he used to always, my uncle was in the airport. She's always in my ear, like, you know, look, you know, you don't want to go down this route. Why don't you check this out? You know, you've always been smart. You've always learned fast. You've always been good at fixing things. Why don't you try the Air Force? I said, you know what, you're successful. No, I'd give it a shot. I definitely didn't want to go to college, so I said I'd give it a shot. Um, and I, I signed up for the Air Force, and I ended up um, getting assigned to um, uh, E&E, with the department's called E&E, which stands for Electrical and Environmental Systems for the F-16. So I ended up working on aircraft, which was, you know, very <laughs> different. But that was my job. So once I went into the Air Force, um, you know, after tech school in Texas, um, I ended up with my first base station was in Las Vegas. And, you know, when I was in Las Vegas, that's when I reconnected with um, my friends and cousins and just close family friends who I grew up with in St. Pete, who was also in Vegas. And he was in Vegas because he was getting the weed from Arizona to Vegas and then sending the Vegas back to Florida. But then he had a problem where he couldn't scale it. He didn't have an easy way of going from, you know, 50 pounds of marijuana to 100 pounds of marijuana with him just being one person, basically flying back and forth and all that. So the wheels in my head started turning and I said, okay, you know, you know, I left that stuff alone, but I feel like we can make this a lot more efficient. And, you know, before we know it, you know, we got so efficient, it eventually caught the federal government's attention and, you know, we were shipping um, thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of marijuana from Nogales, Mexico, through Tucson, from Tucson to, um, all over Florida, you know, Sarasota, St. Petersburg, Tampa, Miami, et cetera. Okay. This is where your story it got, got, it got, it got, it got, it got real big real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me. How old were you when you joined the service? I think I was 18, 18. You're 18 year old. You're still a teenager. Yeah. Yep. You get in the service. Somehow you get shipped out to Vegas. Yep. That's where you're stationed. Yep. You connect with a family member slash good friend from the old hood. Yep. He's making money on the streets out there, but he doesn't necessarily know how to scale that marijuana business yet. This right. is what gets you to thinking. First and right. foremost, how long were you in the service before this happened? Maybe, maybe Six, eight months, not that long. Damn. <laughs> not that long. <laughs> You're not even in the service a year. Nah. Okay. nah. And then I actually got out. I got out. I got out the service in um in two years, actually. Okay, so you did two years of active duty. Yep. When you and got then, out, I started making so much money outside of it. My by the second year, by going into my second year, I was making so much money outside of the service. I was like, I don't, I don't need this anymore. So I opted to get out early and they let me. Okay. Even just even though I got indicted, went to prison, I still have honorable discharge because I got out before I got indicted. So okay. Got so you're honorably discharged after two years. I want you to walk me through the scaling of this business. I want to understand how much. And in first, it, it, it was was it only marijuana, or you also dealing in weight? Yeah, so we dabbled, and, but then we realized that at the time, at that time, if you was able to scale marijuana, you could make the same money that you could make with cocaine without the legal risk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, without getting starting at, you know, 20, 30 year sentences, you could make that same money with marijuana if you was able to scale it. And the problem with marijuana is that it took a lot of space. It was very bulky and big. So it was very difficult to move a lot of that, you know, key is very small and compact. So it was just, it was just very, it was just, it was, it was easier if you're able to scale it, you know, you can make the same amount of money and cut your risk by, you know, 80% as far as legal risk is concerned. Okay. So, so talk to me, how did you scale this business? How long did it take? How big did the operation get? How much money were you making? Yeah. So it started, it started out with just, you know, five, 10 pounds at a time. And the big challenge, like I mentioned before, is that um, it's very bulky and it's very big. And the smell is very, very, very pungent and strong. So, you know, the better the quality, the more stronger the smell, and it's very hard to, to pass that through undetected. So, you know, back in those days, you know, this was 
this was before TSA was a thing and it was super hard to get stuff through the airport. These guys were flying back with it in their suitcases, you know, wishing a prayer and just hoping to get through and, and stuff like that, right? So it was, it was is, like is that. This before, is, is this before you came into the operation that they yeah, were flying? Yeah, this is before me. This is before me, yeah. This is before, okay, great. Yeah, so, you know, then it was just, you know, but then, you know, at five, 10 pounds at a time, you know, which, you know, street value on that was five to 10 grand around that time. Um, it, 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 it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't practical to fly back and forth like that. It just wasn't practical. So, you know, what we, what ended up allowing us to scale it is one day I was in Bath and Body Works and I forget what I was buying. Or no, not Bath and Body Works, Bed, Bath, Bed, Bath and Beyond, like the home goods store. Mm -hmm. And I forget what I was there for, but I was walking through the aisles and I seen one of those vacuum seal packs where people was putting their comforters in to store it for the summer. And it basically sucks all the air out and it keeps the dust out, it keeps the water out. So I looked at that, I was like, damn, this, this, <laughs> this might solve my problem, right? Because before that, we would use detergent and saran wrap and we would be wrapping, be spending all night wrapping these huge bales and it would take hours to do, you know, to get through 300 pounds, you're like, you're working, you're literally working eight hours to get through that because in the amount of time it takes to wrap it up to try to just kill the smell. This is all to kill the smell so that you can get it through the postal system or the shipping system undetected. So long story short, you know, a lot of, you know, it started out with just doing it manually, putting dish detergent, putting black pepper to throw off the, the, the drug smelling dogs and just all this stuff, this, this whole process to wrap these bells up to try to ship them um, to Florida. And then one day I stumbled across those vacuum seal bags and I said, damn, let me try that. So I bought a box, took it home. I put one of the bells in it. I vacuumed it up, it took me all the five minutes. And I threw it in my pool and it stayed completely dry and it had no smell. Um, so then I, that's when it clicked and I said, okay, now we're in business. And basically from that, that allowed us to scale from doing, you know, 300 pounds, which is still a lot, to thousands in the same time period, the same, you know, the same month or so. So it, it just allowed us to scale significantly with, the, and it got to the point where, you know, we knew a percentage, you know, I knew if, if I sent 500 pounds, you know, 30 or 40 of them is going to get stopped by the police uh, or either it's going to get stopped by the police, it's going to get stolen by someone who works in UPS, FedEx, or DHL, or it's going to get stolen by the person that works at the counter where you de deliver it. And then, so it, it, it would get stopped by one of those three things. So all of the, all the disruptions wasn't always from law enforcement. It was a lot of times just people just stealing it um, and the, or it was from employees stealing it. So, um, but we knew the percentage it was going to be lost, which is translates to pretty much any business, any retail business, you're only going to have a percentage of loss. Yep. And we just knew what percentage of loss we was going to have. And then we just knew what scale we need to have. And because we had the vacuum seal process, it allowed us to quickly get huge bales, sealed, packaged, no smell, no detection, 100% detection. And then the next problem was we ran out of places to ship it to. So when you're sending mail at that scale, you can't send a lot at one address because it starts looking suspicious. And then you start bringing attention on, you know, why are all these packages coming from Arizona or Vegas going to the same address all the time or every week? Because again, the bigger it gets, the more you have, right? So what we, how we saw that is we started getting drivers on payroll. So we started getting UPS drivers on payroll, FedEx drivers on payroll, um, DHL drivers on payroll. And then all we had to do is get the zip code right to make sure that the box went on, our, on somebody that was on our payroll's truck. Once it got on their truck, it didn't matter what address. We could make up 100 different addresses, it didn't matter. As long as the zip code was right, it was gonna get assigned to a right to the particular truck. And we knew which zip codes to use to get it on the trucks that we wanted to get on. And then that's how the distribution kind of came together so that we was able to basically infinitely scale to get as much as we wanted um, because we had every piece of the supply chain um, was, was basically on our payroll. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.